everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, the all-pro linebacking team is well represented, as we've got two of them on display here. It's Sean Lee and Vaughn Miller. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building as we come to you from Sports Authority Field at Mile High here in downtown Denver. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. And hello again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. Dan Bailey now to put the ball in the air, and off we go from Sports Authority Field. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their third-year QB out of Northwestern, Trevor Simeon. What a ride he's been on these last few years. I remember seeing him in high school before he went to Northwestern. Didn't get on the field all that much there and then got to Denver as a seventh-round pick and ended up starting the season opener in 2016 for the defending Super Bowl champs. Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They run it again with Anderson. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. CJ with a nifty move. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now it's the Chiefs all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. They'll try the air now with Simeon. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And all the way home for a Bronco score. 
Emmanuel Sanders, 45 yards. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned to get the football to start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. McManus on to kick this one off. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. Their second year QB leading them. It's the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year for 2017, Dak Prescott. For a fourth round selection, Dak Prescott looked as comfortable as a rookie quarterback could look right from game one. And by the end of the year, accumulate a lot of statistics, but the biggest one, 13 wins, which tied him with Ben Roethlisberger for the most as a rookie starting quarterback. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 23 yards on the play. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Prescott now from the 50. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. Now they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You usually got to pick up a holding call. Takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. And that's a gain of six on the first down run. Elliott last year so darn good, over 1,600 yards, most in the NFL. It, actually, there were 10 teams that didn't rush for as many yards as he did. That's how good he was. And just think, there is a place for him to get better. And I think it's in pass receiving, not necessarily the hands, but just throwing it to him more, getting him into open space. He can make even more big plays doing that. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves him still needing 11 here on third down. 
The offensive starters now for the Cowboys. The trademark of the Cowboys offense is balance. They start with the running game, the number two running team in the NFL in 2016. And while the number 23 passing number may give some cause for alarm, don't look at it that way. They run the ball so well and so effectively that when they do decide to throw the football, it often results in big plays downfield. On third down, it's Prescott. Tough to bring Bryant down, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now the seventh-year man, Chris Jones, on to kick as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And coming out now, the Broncos. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you run into big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. I want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Here we go now. Three nineteen. Again, Anderson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. And the coach has decided to challenge this play. He has tossed down the red flag. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a run with Anderson. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Give him three on first down. 
It'll set up a second and seven. The offensive starters now for the Broncos. The team that was consistently in the top five just a few seasons ago, they finished 27th overall in offense in 2016. A combination of uncertain line play and inconsistent quarterback, I think, led to that ranking. Second down, Anderson. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down and six. And now the defense for Dallas. The Cowboys' defense is characterized by its cohesiveness. When you look at them position by position, you're not often impressed. But when you play together collectively, as the Cowboys did in 2016, you find a defense that ranked number one against the run, and we're a tough team to solve for everyone who tried to move the ball against them. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Green, 39. From the gun, here's Simeon. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game All right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. First and ten, Prescott. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a 40-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. And they've kept the core intact from the unit that won Super Bowl 50. Secondary, still a strong suit. Number one against the pass in 2016. They've ranked fourth overall in total defense. So they haven't dropped off at all. They're hoping to get some more consistent play from their offense to get them back to the Super Bowl. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Prescott now on second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The man with over 1,000 catches, Jason Witten, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. That's a sight that Denver fans are used to seeing. Passes falling incomplete against their defense. Number one in pass defense in 2016, but they give up less than 200 yards per game. Yeah, 186. Only team in the league to allow less than 200 per contest. Elite cover guys and big-time pass rushers. Prescott now. Under a 
heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon Marshall coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Our eyes shift to the defense of the Cowboys now. They did their job last go around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now, hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk let's about, Dust, all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. On third and short, this is Janovich. And he will have the first down as he's up to his 17-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. But usually, he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker. And now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. A first down carry here for Charles. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Second down, Jamal Charles. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. The Broncos on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. 
They'll fake it. Now Simeon. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. It's a big play there on third down. 41 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long game. A play fake to Anderson. It's Simeon. And he will find his big tight end over the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. In the red zone this time. Back to the ground, Anderson. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. At the end of one, it's the Broncos with the early lead. Charles and I back to Denver after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Broncos on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, Simeon. That's caught. It's Thomas. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 90 catches, close to 1,100 yards last year for Thomas. For most guys, that'd be incredible. For Thomas, those numbers his lowest since 2011. Well, he does have his old offensive coordinator back, so I'm sure he's expecting to get back to his former levels of play. Shotgun snap for Simeon. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Virgil Green from six yards away. And the Broncos will extend their lead. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Now McManus for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos.
Now McManus on to kick this one off. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28 yard line. A gain of three, second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. A second down throw for Prescott. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Des Bryant, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Prescott from the gun on third. Complete to Jason Witten. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Dak fighting his tight end. Witten and the Cowboys have a first down. The numbers for Dak as a rookie last year are still kind of mind-boggling. You look at QB rating. Dak was 104.9. Now, among full-time quarterbacks, only two Super Bowl quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and Tom Brady, were higher. And look who we finished ahead of. Guys like Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson. Amazing. Down carry by Elliott. Trucks through him. Oh, man. Right through him. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Defensively, as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Prescott. And that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. Yeah, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Trevor Simeon ready to retake the field. And the numbers for the last drive, and he was perfect, which maybe isn't surprising because he has not missed a pass in this game yet. And it lets you know just how precise things have to be for a quarterback to be perfect because that means the line's blocking really well. No one's dropping any of the passes thrown to them, and the quarterback is accurate. It's almost like a pitcher throwing a no-hitter or a perfect game, isn't it? 
He's a principal guy, but he needs a lot of help. Time to find out if he can keep that perfect game going here, partner. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. Blitz coming and down he goes. Steven Paya coming up the middle. Gets him there for a loss of about nine. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. at the 10 and they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down all right partner let's go back over the last couple of plays sack loss of yards on a running play not exactly the sequence that an offensive coordinator gets comfortable with when calling plays Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here we go now. Green, third and down. Back to throw, Simeon. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. Let's just take it around the 12. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but... They need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, him. don't take him totally out of the game. They start on the ground with Elliott. And an alley to run. And he'll be knocked down sideways at the 49. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. the ground with Elias and an alley to run and he's brought down they pick up 12 on the play there and they move the chains that's another nice run and I have to tell you some of the coaches that I played for their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open well other coaches said you know something until they stop him that big boy's going to keep getting the football and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now A 
first down throw for Prescott. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now the backup, Darren McFadden. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. That's going to set him back five yards. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now Prescott. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And the drive will wind up yielding three. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. They start the drive with Anderson. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. There are times when I think people just overlook how good a player Sean Lee really is. One of the more athletic linebackers in the league. He can make plays against the run, against the pass, you name it. He's one of the better ones out there. And number 50 so loved by the fans in Dallas. Here's Simeon now on second down. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Malik Collins busting through to get him for a loss of six. 
Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Simeon in need of something big following that sack, facing third and long. Simeon and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds call it a three yard gain and it'll be fourth down was that a receiver <laughs> yeah actually it was it was a running back who was a receiver on the play Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down well those guys out of the backfield they got to be good agile with their feet he showed the agility there with a toe tap no doubt about it it's like he'd run to ballet school got the toes down and stayed in bounds and he gets this away and look at this this is a good one this is taken at about the 14 62 yards on the punt that time. Wow. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Getting set to go again, Darren McFadden working his way out of the field here. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. They'll run with Elliott. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down, Prescott. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Williams. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Listen in on the call. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? up to the 41-yard line. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Three, three. 
From the shotgun, it's Prescott. On the left side, he finds Beasley. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been terrific so far. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Trevor Simeon and the Broncos heading back out. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First down, Simeon. And incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Second and ten, Simeon again. And caught, right side, Green. And he is out of bounds, getting it just shy of the 35. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Simeon throwing again. And no escaping. 
coming this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Steven Paya in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. back at the 35. It's a loss of two, now third down. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying it is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second Let's down go. went backwards. It's third and very long. Charles getting the handoff from Simeon. And unable to get downhill there, so he'll take this up to about the 37. And now the Cowboys are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. time running short here they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one so we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one as we send you now to Orlando to check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports halftime report take it away LR all right Brandon back to you and Charles in a bit but first let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half the Broncos are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Cowboys didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. Here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Down to early in the second quarter. Simeon's going to complete the pass, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The Broncos up now by 14. Now first and 10, Paya's got to get the quarterback here. This ends up as a loss of nine. Broncos now later on the drive. Lee will get to the QB for the sack. This will go as a loss of 10. Cowboys trail by 12. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando for the call of the second half. Let's hand it back over to Brandon and Charles. Brandon.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Cowboys now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Second half starts with a carry by Elliott. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Now Elliott. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M. And all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game as we just saw there. The Cowboys on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is gonna be third and 13. Prescott from the gun. Side. He's got Witten. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, Prescott. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So it can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. On second down, Prescott again. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Fresh set of downs here. This is Elliott. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And here comes play number six on this drive. Okay, 
On second down, Elliott. Given three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. The Cowboys on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. First down at Simeon, and it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. That one going for a gain of 11, and a Bronco first down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. First down. Here's the run with Anderson. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. And I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. In my book, that's running the ball well but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Oh, he's got some breathing room. C.J. Anderson. And he's able to get it all the way down to the 20. A big time run there by Anderson. 52 yards. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. This is Charles. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 11 more on that one and another first down. He's gone over 1,000 yards five times in his career, but he's at the 30-year-old mark, and there's a lot of concern about running backs over the age of 30. Five yards are better for carrying each of his first eight seasons. Now past 30, we'll see if that trend can continue. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Let's go. Three, 19. Three, 19. They run it. It's Charles. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They'll try the air now with Simeon. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. 
sack back around the eight. Steven Paya able to disrupt yet another pass play, his third sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And this offense on third down today, they're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and goal. They're going to run with Charles. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A gain of seven might change the thought process here as they have some options on fourth and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. Left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And McManus able to put it through, and that will give him a 12-point lead. So put another three on the board, and all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how, their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. On first end, Prescott. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They'll run it now out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And while there's no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. And we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. On third down, it's Prescott. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. And we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. 
51 yards on the punt there. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But I also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. To throw on second is Simeon. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. From the gun on third, Simeon. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Complete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Broncos on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Simeon. This is going to be incomplete. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. 
Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. We focus our attention now on the Broncos' defense. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Prescott looks to throw on first. Pass incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Second down following the incompletion. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. The Cowboys on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Here's Prescott. Pressure up the middle, and down he goes. Adam Gatsas with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They could put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's Emmanuel Sanders now as he and the rest of the offense march back onto the field. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. They go play action here on first down. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Simeon. And incomplete on the deep ball. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. Third down here. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Broncos on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now Simeon. Going up top. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. 
They would have loved one there, but at least it does get him to fourth down. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Here comes the defensive unit for the Broncos. They trot back out there. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here. See if they can force another three and out. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here's Elliott. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Second down following the run. Looking to throw, Prescott, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Cowboys on third down, just a 20% success rate at two of 10. This will be third and six. Prescott. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. Trevor Simeon ready to retake the field. And the stats on the screen tell the story, a great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? And rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Hurry up, here we go. Three, 19. They run. Anderson fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone fraction defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Four yards remaining now on second down. Following the penalty, Anderson. 
And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Simeon. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on E8. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Bronco football, and they also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth. Here's Riley Dixon now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. That's taken on the 25. A 45-yard punt, four there on the return, and the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Prescott on first down, and his throw here is incomplete. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get in the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. Throwing again, Prescott on second and 10. And his throw is incomplete. Jason Witten, the intended target, and it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard of the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And not much room there, so he'll get it up only to about the 21. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, 
that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach, he's in big trouble. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now Anderson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football. This D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. Now a play fake here on first down. Green's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but, but this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Play action. It's Simeon. And that's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. And it's third and short. Let's face it. You can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync. Practice it. Do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Green 39! Green 39! They'll run it now, out of the gun. Dropped at the 35, but he was able to display the agility there. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. Again, Anderson. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Hurry up, here we go. Hurry up. On first 
First down, Simeon. His throw incomplete. looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Throwing on third down, Simeon. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out of running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. He hit his first, this one from 38. McManus able to put it through and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three there but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt I think a touchdown would have been the final nail but three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. down throw for Prescott. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Prescott from the gun. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the offense has it first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Throw left side, caught by Butler. A gain of six there on first. Six. 
second down now after the pass completion. Prescott now from the 50. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So here we go, first and ten now. They'll throw again. Prescott. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. That's on the Pro Bowl guard from Notre Dame, Zach Martin. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Complete to Jason Witten. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. And now the offense operates in the red zone. From the red zone now, Prescott. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Go, go, go. 
And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. Offense. That's on Lyle Collins, free agent signee who was originally thought of as a first-round draft pick. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. And here is motion again. And that's going to be two in a row. Mark that one against one of the top left tackles in the league, Tyron Smith. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Prescott yet again. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Third and long for Prescott. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Jason Garrett might be wanting to reconsider the decision to go for it there. And the Broncos will take over on downs. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now really hoping for a turnover. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Let's go. They run the counter now. It's Anderson. <laughs> and he's brought down after a good game. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Again on first down, Anderson. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Oh, oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Now a 
and Simeon off the bootleg. Green with a catch left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Simeon on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Second down to Anderson. <laughs> and he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Looks like he'll throw here. Catch here, left side, Thomas. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. zone opportunity. From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. Now Orson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here we go now. Green. 
So they'll try again with Anderson. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The line of scrimmage is the two here on third and goal. They'll run for it with Anderson. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys... They've got it going today. And McManus able to put it through. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points. But they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. First down, Prescott. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. One last shot now for Prescott. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. And Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get home after a win like that. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.